In this tutorial, you will learn how to import purchase requisitions. There are five steps to follow when importing and creating a purchase requisition from an Excel spreadsheet or CSV file. Step 1. Download the purchase requisition import template. Step 2. Populate the template with the data you want to load into the system. Step 3. Generate the CSV file that will be loaded and processed in the system. Step 4. Run the process to load the generated CSV file into the system. And Step 5. Run the import requisition process to create the purchase requisition. In the first step, we need to download the purchase requisition template. This is the URL you will use to access the template. It is available in the training material description. Simply copy and paste it into your browser. Under the Self-Service Procurement section, click the Import Requisitions link. A new screen opens with a download link for the template. Click the download link. Once the Excel file has downloaded, click on it to open the spreadsheet. Click the Enable Editing button and then the Enable Content button. You are now ready to proceed to Step 2 of the process. As shown here, the template comes with multiple worksheet tabs. The first worksheet contains instructions about the loading process and what you'll need to do with that data. The Excel template format section lays out how the template should be formatted, such as the date format to be used. The recommendation section contains best practice instructions. It is important to read these instructions so that you understand how to populate the data, what prerequisites there may be, and so on. The second worksheet is for requisition headers. The third worksheet is for requisition lines, and the fourth worksheet deals with a distribution line. There is sample data in the template which acts as a guide to help you populate the template with your data. The red triangle in the column headings indicate that there is a note attached. Move your cursor over the triangle to display the note. You will see information about what type of data goes into the cells in this column and how it's used. We have prepared a template and populated it with the data that we'll be using for this tutorial. So let's close this default template and open the prepared one. Double click on the file to open it. Here you see the data we have prepared for this tutorial. The first worksheet is exactly the same as the default template. It contains all the information and instructions for completing the template. The second worksheet contains the requisition header. Let's take a look at some of the key attributes. The interface header key column is where you will insert a unique number for a specific requisition. This key is just a sequence number. In this example, the unique key number 100 will group all records and lines associated with this key into one requisition. So, if you're populating the template with data that is related to multiple requisitions, you will have multiple unique key identifiers which will tie specific records to the corresponding requisition. The import source is a type of grouping that identifies where the data is coming from. It is one of the import process parameters. We've already talked about the requisition BU in previous tutorials. The batch ID column is a grouping attribute. When you perform the import, the system will load all the records belonging to this batch ID. In the status column, you will enter completed or approved. In the Entered By column, you will enter the email address of the employee entering the purchase requisition. In the Description column, you will enter the purchase requisition description. In this example, it is Tudor Ally Rec Import Tutorial. There are a lot of fields in the template, but you don't have to populate all of them. The ones marked with an asterisk indicate that they are required fields. Based on the data you enter, other fields might also become required. And when you load the template, you might get error messages telling you that you need to provide certain data. In the Requisition Lines worksheet, we see that the interface header key is also 100, indicating that this line belongs to the requisition header number 100 we reviewed a moment ago. 
In the interface line key column, we have created a sequence number 110. When you go to the distribution section, you will link this line number to the related distribution lines. In the destination type code column, you will select either expense or inventory. You also need to provide a delivery to location. In this example, it's Seattle. The requester must also be provided. This will be the email address of the employee who is requesting the item. Enter the item description and the category name. If you have the item code, you can put it into this cell and leave the item description and category name blank. Other columns we've completed in this example are the unit of measure code, the line type, the quantity, the currency, and the price. In the Requisition Distribution Worksheet, you see that the interface line key number is the same as the line key we used in the Requisition Lines Worksheet. In the Interface Distribution Key field, we have provided the number 111. We have also provided the quantity. If you scroll to the right, you will come to the Charge Account segment. Because we are working with an expense account in this tutorial, we have entered information about the charge account this item will be expensed to. When you have gone through the template and completed all the key attributes, you can move on to step 3 and generate the CSV files. Go back to the instructions page in the first worksheet and click the Generate CSV file button. A zip file containing all the CSV files will be generated. Save it to a location on your computer's hard drive. In this case, we are saving it to our Upload folder. Once you click the Save button, a new window will open where you will save the header CSV file. Click Save again and you will see the next worksheet name. Here we see the Lines Interface CSV file. Click the Save button one more time, and now we see the Distribution Interface CSV file name. When all of the files have been saved, a message will pop up confirming that the CSV and ZIP files have been created. Click OK to close the pop-up. When we go back and look at the folder on our hard drive, we see that all the files have been saved. Now let's move on to Step 4. In this step, you will load the zip file into the system. Begin by navigating to the Tools Work area and then click the Schedule Processes icon. A new screen will open. Click the Schedule New Process button. Enter the process name, Load Interface File for Import, and then click OK to close the window. The Parameters window will open. Here, you will enter the name of the import process you want to run. Then, hit Enter on your keyboard. A search window will open. Click the Advanced button. We'll use the drop-down list to select Contains, and then enter part of the process name followed by the percentage symbol. Click the Search button or hit Enter on your keyboard. In this example, the search retrieves one process, Import Requisitions, but you may have a few to choose from. Select the one you want and then click OK. The system goes back to the Process Details window and now we see that the import process name is added. Once the process name is in, you need to select the data file. Click the drop-down arrow and select Upload a new file. A new window will pop up where you can navigate to the file you want to upload. Click the Choose File button and find the zip file that you saved on your computer's hard drive earlier. Select it and click Open to close the pop-up and return to the Process Details window. When the process name is entered and the data file uploaded, click the Submit button. A message will pop up confirming the process has been submitted. Click OK to close the pop-up. The files will now be loaded into the system. Here we see the processes. Click the Refresh button to update the status. Keep clicking the Refresh button until all the processes attain a Succeeded status.
This means that the loading process has been successfully finished. In this example, you see that these three processes all have a status of succeeded, which means the data has been successfully loaded and you can now move on to the last step, which is to run the import requisition process. There are two ways to complete this step. The first one is to click the Schedule New Process button and in the pop-up window, Enter the process name and hit either enter on your keyboard or click OK to open the process details parameters page. This is where you will enter some information and then click the submit button to submit the process. Let's look at the second way to run the import requisition process. Go back to the system home page and navigate to the procurement work area. Then, click the Purchase Orders icon. Click Tasks, and from the Requisitions area, click the Import Requisitions link. The Import Requisitions screen will open. Click the Submit New Process button at the top of the screen. You will be taken to the same parameters screen we saw in the first method. Now, let's complete this form. We'll go back to the header worksheet in our Excel file to find the import source and batch ID. Copy these attributes and paste them into the appropriate fields in the parameters form. Select the requisitioning BU from the drop down list and select the grouping. In this example, we will select none. When you are finished, click the submit button. A message will pop up confirming that the process was submitted. You'll notice that the status shows as Wait. Keep clicking the Refresh icon until the process status displays as Succeeded. Then click the Done button. Now let's check that the requisition has been created in the system. Return to the system homepage and from the procurement work area, click the Purchase Requisitions icon. In this screen, we see that the Tutor Ally Rec Import Tutorial requisition was created. Click on the requisition number to open the requisition screen and review the requisition details. Click Done to close the screen. You can also navigate to the requisition details by clicking the Manage Requisitions link at the top of the screen. Here we see the requisition number and description. Click on the requisition link and once again you will be taken to the requisition details screen. At this stage you need to review the requisition details to ensure everything is correct and then submit it for approval. In this tutorial, you learned how to import a purchase requisition from an external Excel spreadsheet into the system.